This video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. Um, okay, so we're we running. Topic is distortion. Oh. Intriguingly. Yeah. Do you want to know how to distort your knife? Do you want to know how to make a bent knife? Make a, a knife that will sit alongside your banana and cut it nicely. Uh, most people don't, unfortunately. Otherwise, my life would be very much easier. I'm Graham Clark. I'm a metallurgist by profession and I run Clark Knives in rural Wiltshire where we run knife making courses and we also run a heat treatment service for knife makers and we make Damascus steel billets which we sell out to other knife makers. Okay, so we're we running. Yeah. Topic is Distortion. Distortion is the biggest bugbear. It's not just in the heat treatment of knives, it's in heat treatment in general. Bearing in mind I've spent 50 odd years heat treating metal for other people. And always the biggest problems we ever got with our clients is distortion. And there are many reasons for this. And I think perhaps if I go through and explain where distortion comes from, uh, it's going to help. And I'll, I'll try and keep the topics down to what we have in the heat treatment world. So first of all, you're just buying a piece of steel from a very nice knife supplier. There are a few good ones around. They buy it from a steel mill. A lot of the stuff we use for knife making, especially as knife makers as opposed to the bladesmiths, we're starting off with something that's fairly thin. There's a strong possibility that's come out of the steel mill on a coil. So this coil might weigh a ton, a ton and a half, and it's, it's, it's wide strip and it's wrapped round and round in a coil. It's very easy to transport a heavy piece of metal. It doesn't take up a lot of volume. Quite easy to transport the coils. The coil then goes to the country it's going to be sold, bearing in mind it's exported all around the world gets to where it's going to be sold and it then goes into a steel distributor who uncoils it so he's got a machine and he bends it backwards until it comes out nice and flat Now, this is a bit like the old paperclip trip, you know? You, you turn your paperclip enough, it breaks in half. Why does it break in half? Because as you bend it, you distort the crystal structure, it hardens it, and it eventually gets so hard, it snaps in half. Now, your piece of coil, when that's come out of the steelworks, they've probably coiled it, and they've probably then annealed it while it's in the coil. So now it's come out and it's been straightened, the stresses in there are not always the same. Sometimes when you buy, I, I've noticed this with some stainless steels when I've bought them in, they come in slightly bent, and you sit there and you bend them straight, now you start making your knife. All of that is putting internal stresses into the material. You then make your knife, you then send it to me for heat treatment and I heat treat it through normal processes and I send it back to you bent and you're now bitching like hell quite justifiably because you can't make a knife out of a bent blank and it's so hard it's nice and hard for making a good knife you try to straighten it's going to snap in half it's a, an age-old problem and i'm sure many of you have been making knives for a long time will understand exactly what i'm talking about for me to get it back to you while it's hard and straight is not the easiest trick in the world and i'll explain to you why you've now got this piece of metal and it's got some stresses in it how do you get those stresses out you put it through a stress relieving cycle so put it into a furnace now a stress relieving cycle is what they call heating up to below the critical point now your steel when you're heat treating it it, it, it has a, a crystal structure it's got little atoms inside there which are made into crystals and the crystals in iron are cubed so you've got eight little atoms all sitting on the corner in a little box that makes a cube and you get another one and another one with iron particularly at room temperature you've got another atom which is in the middle of that crystal so you've got one two three four five six seven eight and you've got number nine which is smack in the middle and it's called a body center cubic when you heat it up a lot of you will know particularly with carbon steels and with stainless steels as well when it goes into red heat it loses its magnetism that's because that crystal structure changes still got a cube with one on each corner but now instead of having one in the middle of the cube you've got one in the middle of each face of the cube so you've got another six in there it's just a different kind of structure that one's non-magnetic. You have to go through that change, otherwise you can't harden the material. We'll talk about that a bit more when we get onto hardening. But in order to stress relieve it, you've now bent this thing like your old paper clip and you've got these stresses in there. You've got to heat it up till you're below that critical point. All the stresses then relieve themselves, cools down. But of course, if there was stress in there and it's now relieved, your metal's going to bend. You had what was a little bit bent, you put it in for stress relieve and it comes out, it might be a bit more bent. Or it might have bent the other way, it might have come out straight. If it's come out straight, that's great. But if it's a bit more bent, you're gonna bend it straight again. Okay, you bend it straight again, you put more stresses in there. I take it and put it in the heat treatment furnace, heat it right up and quench it down again. It's bent again. It's not easy to keep them straight. 
A lot of people say, well, okay, you're going to heat treat it, you're gonna take it through the stress relieving operation. Yes, you are. But as you heat it up now, I'm gonna heat it up to harden it. You take it up, you go through the stress relieving temperature. The metal bends on you. It's now up at hardening temperature and it's got a bend in there, which it didn't have when it went in the furnace, purely because of the stresses that were in it when you put it in. You take it out, you dunk it in the oil. Those, that, that's not gonna come straight. That bend is gonna stay there. Hardened it, you got a bend. Okay, you say, well, okay, quench it between two aluminium plates. Uh, actually, actually works quite Quite well. So I'm sure Vince is going to put a little video in here which shows you how I heat treat mine and you'll see that I squash mine between two plates. It's called plate quenching. That can work but you haven't got so much control over your quench rate. Certain steels, some of the lower carbon steels like a 1080, you quench that between two plates, it's not going to come up fully hard because you can't cool it quick enough. This is all part of the heat treatment process. So distortion is difficult. And it's not always the fault of the heat treater. Now I'm not saying that because I am a heat treater and I don't want you to come bitching at me because I've sent you a knife back that's bent, but it's not always the heat treater's fault. Your steel can come in and it's full of stress. You can have been grinding it quite heavily. You can have been banging it around. You may have been forging it and not fully normalized it. You may not have got all your stresses out of it. You heat it up, get it to the hardening temperature and unbeknown to anybody, because it's now sitting inside a furnace where you can't see it, the thing has bent itself. It's bent itself because the stresses that are in it have relieved. So that is one of the primary causes of distortion. Uh, other causes of distortion are not quenching it properly, quenching it into oil and from side to side. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm stirring it around in the oil, it's quenching quicker. Well, as you're moving from one side, the oil is blasting against that side of the knife much harder than it is this side of the knife. So you're cooling that side quicker than this side. That can cause it to bend. Then when you go back in the other way, it doesn't always bring it back straight just because you're moving it backwards and forwards. You know, if you feel the need to move it in the oil, go that way, not that way, but rather just put it in the oil and, and leave it still. Then you say, well, okay, we've hardened it. Now when I temper it, we're going to bend it in the opposite direction and it will it will come straight during the tempering. Yes and no, it sometimes works. That's a bit of a black art. There is a process called temper setting, which means that if you take a piece of material that's been hardened and you bend it, and then you, t you hold it in a bent position and you temper it, and if you temper it at a particular temperature, it will maintain that new position. When it cools down, you've got that thing straight. You know, electric hedge trim, you know, they've got those very thin blades with teeth sticking out of them and cut your hedge. Those things are made to distort when you harden them. The other ones I've done millions of is the uh, petrol heads amongst you will know what I'm talking about. It's a diaphragm spring and a clutch. It's a circular piece of thin spring steel with lots of little cuts in it which make the spring and that, that's what holds the clutch pressure in the clutch of your car. If you want to heat treat that, it's not very thick. It might only be half a millimetre thick, three quarters of a millimetre thick, and it might be two, three hundred mil diameter, and it's got all lots of slots in it. You cut it and you dunk it into oil. Man, that comes out like a, a bent wafer. But those things can be straightened. What we used to do was stack them up in a great big pile, put a massive weight on the top, then we tempered them. But we were tempering those things at nearly 500 degrees because that was the temperature you need to get the right spring properties in that steel. Temper setting works great above 450 50 degrees centigrade. You put it into whatever shape you want. The old hedge trimmers, put them into a big clamp, clamp them up tight, temper them at 480. You got the right hardness that it would it would stay sharp but wouldn't snap on you when you happen to cut into the telephone wire that's in the middle of your hedge and they would stay straight and it, and it works. Temper setting. It doesn't work so well when you're tempering at 150, 200, 250 degrees. It does but it's not so good. So you can't just uh, clamp it flat and say well I'm going to temper it at 200 degrees and it will come out flat because what usually happens is you clamp it flat the temper set only partially works and it half pings back again so now you've got to reverse temper it you've got to bend it the other way and temper it at 200 degrees and hope when it springs back hope it comes up straight yeah i do it i do it for my clients it's an art i'm not trying to mystify it and pretend that i can clever enough to do something that the average person can't but it takes a lot of practice to get the right amount of reverse bend there's plenty of other knife makers out there will tell you they've got it right they can do it it does work but it's not always reliable 
the first thing about distortion that I really want to get across to knife makers is please, sometimes you've got to accept a bit of distortion. If you want a thing to come back die block straight, it may not happen. A good heat treater will do his best to get it back to you straight, but it's not always easy to control. Very, very difficult. I just need people to understand that, please. And this is what this video is about. Please understand it and please don't castigate me every time your knife doesn't come back as straight as you was hoping for. It's not the easiest concept to, to, to get across. And I'm going to keep reverting back to the old example of the paper clip. It's all to do with internal stress. Another thing that some people might understand, if you cold work a piece of metal, you remember that most metals, particularly iron, brass is another classic example, they're made up of regular crystals. And if you break those crystals by mechanical working, you break them down into a finer structure. All the little atoms are held together by forces between the atoms which attract them. Just like the, the same way that the moon doesn't spin off into outer space because it's held into orbit around the earth by the attraction of the t t the two masses that they, they, they attract each other atoms use in fact you use exactly the same formula to calculate the stress between the mass of two atoms and the distance they are apart so the further they move apart so the lower the stresses get so when you've normalized or fully annealed should i say a piece of steel so you've heated it up until you've changed the structure into this i think it's face center cubic when it gets really hot and you allow it to cool incredibly slowly back down to room temperature and the atoms have got all the time in the world to reorganize them the way they want to in nice straight rows and nice little cubes and a nice little ball of key in the middle there won't be any stress in there theoretically i suppose you've got to call it infinitely slowly which doesn't work but if you call it slowly enough you've got no stress but as soon as you start bending that piece of metal the forces holding all those atoms together start to distort the distances between the atoms start to change because you're breaking the crystal structure therefore there are more forces on this side of the piece of steel and the less on that side and when you heat it up again those forces all relax themselves and of course then that pulls the steel round. I'm hoping that makes it simple enough it's not the easiest topic to understand but you can put stress into metal you put stress into metal when you harden it that's done by a different way you actually force the crystal structure into a, into a structure it doesn't want to go to but you don't give it time to reorganize all the atoms into the structure it wants to be so you actually force it into something that's like elongated and that in itself puts stress between all the atoms and high stress means high hardness that's how you get the hardness in it and when you temper it they will all relax themselves and they will all go back to where they want to be. Stress is, is a difficult concept in a piece of metal to understand but generally it means that it gets harder. Yes, if, if I didn't put stress into the metal when I hardened it, it wouldn't be hard. But there's different ways of getting stress into it. One's to belt it with a hammer on an anvil. While it's cold, when it's hot, the stresses automatically relieve themselves. So when it's cold and you bang it with a hammer, it will get harder. Some of you guys make lovely knives with little dimples down each side, which you've hammered into there with a hammer, but boy, you put stress in there. Sometimes when I pull them out of my hardening furnace and put them into the press to straighten them, which is what I do, they're sitting on the, on the platen like that bent like a banana. Fortunately, we can get most of it out. But those are the kind of stresses that can cause distortion, yes. How do you overcome distortion when you heat treat your knives? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and maybe if you're interested in more knife making related videos, check this one out over here. See you in the next video.